Hi everyone, I'm Kat and welcome to my channel, Naturally Beautiful Girl. So it's been quite a while since I've done a get ready with me, so I thought I would do one today. I've had a lot of things going on in my life recently that I wanted to update you about because they're all really exciting. And also a lot of you commented on my products I've repurchased again and again video saying that you liked my makeup. So I thought I would recreate my makeup look from that video and show you guys how I got it. Don't worry, it's super, super easy. It's kind of my go-to summer easy makeup look. Um, it really helps me to look bronzy and just really summery and fun, but it's super easy and fast to do. So I have read a lot of your comments on that video, even though I've not replied to them yet. I am super behind on replying to comments because of the things I'm going to tell you about, but I do read all your comments. I have the notifications for YouTube turned on on my phone, so I see every one of your comments that comes in. So even if I'm slow getting back to you, I do read them. So I wanted to start off by telling you that I do have the Fit Glow Redness Rescue Cream on my face. I already applied that earlier today. And um, I got this because Reagan sent it to me, um, Reagan from Indie Boo. She had been trying out this product, didn't love it, and I, she, I guess, had heard me saying that I really wanted to try it, so she sent it my way. I don't really have an opinion on it yet. I have only used it a few times, but so far I have really liked it. Um, it's a nice lightweight moisturizer. As someone with oily skin, I find it to not be too thick and too heavy, which especially as we're moving into summer, I really like to keep my moisturizers lightweight. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually go in with the Fit Glow um, Vita Active Foundation. This is the foundation I was wearing in that video. I will be applying this foundation using my MOTD Beauty in the Base brush, which is my favorite foundation brush. To start off with, it has finally actually become summer in New England. We kind of skipped spring and went straight to summer. It is super hot. It is the second day in a row today. Um, that has been over 90 degrees. So my face looks very glowy. It is because I'm really hot and I have the air conditioner turned off so that you guys don't hear it while I'm filming. But um, the one really nice thing about it being summer is that we are getting ready to start our garden again. So my husband and I live in an apartment building that has rooftop gardens that residents can use and plant in during the summer. We did that last year. We planted a whole bunch of vegetables um, and had like a gazillion tomatoes. So we ate a lot of tomatoes last summer, but we really enjoyed it. And so we're gonna do that again this year. And especially because my husband and I are kind of indoor creatures, we don't get out that much. It's really, really nice to have a garden and kind of be forced to get outside. We just found it really relaxing last summer and are really looking forward to it again this summer. And I mean, there's nothing better than being able to grow your own food. It's just so fresh and you know it, for instance, that it's organic and you just, it's nice to know where your food's coming from. So we really enjoyed that. So let me know if any of you have gardens or plant vegetables. I know that Laura from Laura Blushing, she definitely has a lot of plants and I love watching her Instagram stories where she shows her plants because I am a crazy plant woman. You always see my aloe back here, but I believe, oh man, I got some new plants. I believe right now I'm over 10 plants that I own, which is kind of crazy. We don't have any pets, we just have a bunch of plants. Um, we are interested in actually getting a pet. That's something on our to-do list. The tricky thing is my husband is super allergic to like basically everything that has fur. Um, so he can only be around like certain types of hypoallergenic dogs. He grew up with Basenjis, um, which are very, very strange dogs. If you have not heard of a Basenji, go look them up. I believe they're originally African dogs and they kind of look like the ones that are on the hieroglyphics you see in um, ancient Egypt. And they have really pointy ears, which is really cute and like really curly tails and they don't bark. They yodel is what it's called. So they like make this howling noise. Google Basenjis yodeling and you will definitely have a smile on your face. It is really adorable. One of his childhood, the Sunjis is still alive, so I've gotten to see uh, Onyx and hang out with him, so that's been really fun. But we wanted to get a cat because I am a cat person. <laughs> my name is Cat, and um, I go by Cat because 
I don't know, I like it. And also because I like cats. Pause for a second. I'm gonna go in with the Alima Pure Cream Concealer and conceal under my eyes. So we wanted to get a cat because, um, well, my husband just is finishing up his PhD and I still have one more year left. And we're super busy and um, we are worried that we don't have enough time to commit to a dog. That we don't want it to be a dog that gets left alone all day by itself and you know we want we don't want to worry about it and worry about not being able to walk it or get home to it so we have not really looked into getting a dog we're thinking about looking into getting a cat because um they are lower maintenance i've grown up my entire life with cats and so i'm very familiar with them and to be honest most cats i've had just would rather be left alone to their own devices and probably would be happy with the fact that we'd be gone during the day but um, the tricky thing is my husband is allergic to cats, though there are some breeds like Russian Blues and Siamese cats that make a lower amount of the protein that most people are allergic to. And then male cats in general just produce less of the protein that causes the allergy. So we need to go meet with a breeder in our area to see if my husband can tolerate being around either a, Sia a male Siamese or a male Blue Russian cat, which I mean, it makes me sad and it makes my husband sad too that we can't like rescue a dog or a cat, but with his allergies, it's just not an option. So I'm going to set the cream concealer with the RMS Unpowder and I will be applying that using the Real Techniques setting brush. As I kind of alluded to, my husband has successfully defended his PhD. Some of you might not know this, but he um, is also a a chemist. Um, he's been in graduate school along with me and we met in a chemistry class and he's really kind of, I've been really fortunate to have him because he's gone before me so I saw what it was like for him to apply to graduate school. I'm watching him go through his thesis writing and defense process and job search so I always feel like I'm very lucky because I get to see all this. Um, I do, I mean I'm going through it because we are together and we are partners, but it is kind of nice in a way to not have to be the first one doing it. But um, so the spring has been super, super exciting. Uh, that's why we went to Chicago was we went to Chicago a couple days after his defense. So it was truly a celebratory trip. And I'm not sure exactly when you're going to see this video, but probably around the time when you see it, uh, we will actually be at his graduation. So um, we, will, we have one doctor in the household and one more to go. But that being said, um, I am definitely graduating next year. It makes me really nervous to say that, but I've kind of made up my mind that no matter what, it is just time for me to leave graduate school. I'm a little burnt out at this point and I don't, some people will stay like an extra year or so to try and finish up a paper or finish a project. It's just not worth it for me to do that. I, I'm just ready to move on. And I think especially now that my husband is finished, it's making me more anxious to move on as well. Now I'm going to be applying the Hint Beauty Duet Concealer um, with this little, I think it's an eyeshadow brush. I'm just gonna be concealing some acne spots around my face. And I'm not, I don't think I can actually talk while I do this. So hold on, let me just do this quickly. Now that I've gotten that done, I'm going to go in and fill in my eyebrows a bit with the found Shape and Define Brow Pencil. So yeah, as you can imagine, all the stuff with my husband's defense and graduation and um, all of that has just taken a lot of time. And I mean, it's amazing, but it's just been a lot of stuff. And also, also, I've had a weird medical issue with my toe. I know it sounds very strange, but it's a long story. But it, I, we think it's under control now, but it just involved like a lot of doctor's visits because it was rather odd and everyone was like, I don't know what this is. And it had been bothering, it's been bothering me for a few months, but it seems to be mending finally. Um, it's just, it was one of those things where I was like, this is the last thing I have time to deal with, but those things in life happen where 
you know, when you don't have time to do something, you do. So I've had to make time for it, but at least now it does seem to be getting better. So we're very hopeful that this will be the end of the saga of my toe. And by months, I mean my toes, my toe has been bothering me on and off since like February and it's, yeah. So you can do that math. So I'm glad that it finally seems to be getting better. But also, um, it's not just my husband that's had a lot of exciting things happen. It has also been a um, really exciting time for me as well. I mentioned in my Safe and Chic Mystery Box unboxing video that I had gotten a job offer for a job that I really wanted. And I do remember that I still owe you guys a update on the Safe and Chic Mystery Box unboxing. I think I might actually do that as an Instagram story. So if you are not following me on Instagram, I'm at Naturally Beautiful Girl. Be sure to follow me there because I'm so behind on filming videos at this point. I have so many videos I need to film and want to film that I think I'm gonna have to put some in, uh, kind of as Instagram stories just to get caught up again, but I will do an update there. But I did get a job offer. So I'm still a graduate student. I'm still in school. I'm still working on um, you know completing my thesis but I am actually going to be teaching general chemistry at a local college this summer, which is basically my dream. This is what I want to do. I want to be a professor at a small college. And so this is a really great opportunity. Um, it's good experience. It is super exciting, but <laughs> it is an insane amount of work. Um, it's also being taught at night, which is pretty common for courses over the summer. So my schedule is going to be very wacky. And also I'm doing all the planning. I'm having to write lecture notes. Um, I'm also in charge of labs. I'm having to like, you know, go through all the labs, be prepared for all the labs. I'm having to write um, quizzes and exams and <laughs> you name it, I've done it recently. So it is a lot of work really exciting but that is also just made me feel super super busy so now i'm going to powder my face using the alima pure satin matte foundation and i'm going to apply the powder foundation with my motd set and go brush i am really excited about the job it's just a lot of work and to be honest i don't know if i can continue posting two videos a week while the class is going on i'm trying to do that, I'm trying to keep my posting schedule to two videos a week. We may have to cut down to one in the months of June and July while my class is going on just because I'm still a graduate student. So I still have to do research in the lab and then I'm teaching a course on top of it. And there's one of me. <laughs> and as much as I love YouTube and it is really my outlet and it is the way that I relieve stress and whenever I do feel stressed like this is what I love doing like I love filming I love editing videos I love trying out new products which I bought a lot of products to try out because I'm really stressed and I'm like oh I'm stressed I should buy another product to try it out it's a bad thing to have that be my stress relief mechanism because it is very stress relieving for me to like try out new products but then I'm also spending a lot of money but uh, I'm also making more money at the moment because I actually have another job on top of being a graduate student that you know pays a normal wage so that part's nice. Okay now I'm going to comb through my brows using the 100% pure green tea fiber brow. And this just really helps to hold my brows in place and just gets a little bit more color and definition to my brows. Not that they need it because I've got pretty bold brows at the moment, but I like it. So yeah, my husband's actually out of town at the moment. Um, it is his sister's graduation. She is graduating with her master's and I wanted to go, but um, she's at a school that's a little bit tricky to get to, like it involves quite a bit of travel from where we live. I'm in the process of, you know, my teaching mayhem. So I was like, this is not a good time for me to go with you. So, he, you know, he's on his own, which is probably why I'm really chatty because I have been by myself for a couple of days at this point. And I'm a rather chatty person <laughs> and I lost my person who I normally chat with. And I would go, you know, hang out with some of my friends and stuff, but I have been basically just working on course stuff the past 
two days straight, so I needed to get that done, but also it's kind of sad because I can't go enjoy the 90 degree weather today. And what I just did was clean up around my brows with a little bit of concealer. That is one of my pro tips. If you are like me and you're kind of messy when you're doing your brows, you can always use a little bit of concealer. You don't, not to carve out your brows, but just to clean them up um, where you got a little wild with your brow product. For blush, I'm going to be going in with the Terry Mia Hira Alive Blush. I got this one quite a while ago and I don't think you can get it anymore, but it's a very kind of intense hot pink blush. So I'm gonna go in very sparingly with it, but I really do love the color that it gives and super fun for summer. And I'm going to be applying that with my Furless MF1 brush. So that got a bit more pigmented than I wanted and for some reason I can't talk and apply blush apparently. What I always do to kind of blend out my blush, especially if I get it too pigmented, is go in with my powder brush and this is the one that I'd use to apply this Alima Pure Satin Matte Foundation. And it's got a little bit of the powder left on it so I'm just going to kind of blend out my cheeks a little bit and it'll help to tone down the blush because especially on this cheek right here, it got a little bit crazy. much much better and i will sometimes be a little bit more heavy-handed with my blush because i have oily skin and blush just fades on me throughout the day so i'd rather start it off a little bit more intense because it will fade um within within an hour or two so the trick to my look that i had in my other video was to use bronzer and this is not a bronzer per se but as someone with really really fair skin bronzer can be really dicey and this is the bronze this is a product i found that works beautifully as a bronzer and it is the 100 percent pure gemmed luminizer in the shade rose gold it's supposed to be a highlighter for deeper skin tones but what i find for me is that it really just gives me a nice glow to the cheeks a smidge of color but a lot of glow and you guys were saying in that video that my skin looked really glowy really nice i think a lot of it had to do with this guy here what i like to do is i like to apply it the bronzer with a kind of angled fluffy brush like this and this is the Terry Mia Hero number seven um brush but I know MOTD makes one um I think it's called the get cheeky with a brush it's a very similar shape so it's something like this and what I like to do is I like to apply bronzer to kind of the upper um back part of my cheek area and then a little bit around the top part of my face maybe a smidge along my jawline I'm not a fan of that um I just don't find that that looks as good on me, but definitely here, here, and around the perimeter, top perimeter of my face. In preparing for the course, it's really making me rethink about how I learned chemistry, and I love thinking about science education. It's one of my favorite things to think about because so many, particularly I think it's a problem in America, but so many students leave high school and middle school with a dislike of science or they think it's impossible or they think they can't do it especially women minorities just groups that are typically underrepresented in stem really are not encouraged enough and with my one of my dreams has always been to teach something like the course i'm teaching which is a general chemistry course because that's kind of the gateway course like no matter if you study physics, you study biology, you or chemistry, you end up taking gen chem. If you go to med school, you end up taking gen chem. And so I think these courses like this are really important because they really make or break whether a student will be interested in STEM and will stick with STEM. But as I've been preparing my notes and you know going through the different topics, I'm all I'm amazed a bit by the fact that everyone doesn't leave chemistry completely confused and it really has given me so much gratitude and appreciation for the teachers that I've had because the a lot of the topics are presented weirdly in books the order that they're presented in doesn't always make sense the examples aren't always actually that clear and it's interesting for me to think about too because I feel like I'm a select group of people that went through chemistry and loved it. So I have a different perspective than someone that struggled with chemistry. It's just a very interesting thing for me to think about because I want to be as helpful as I can for my students and present the material in a way that 
they can understand. I truly honestly believe that everyone can do chemistry to some degree, to some level or another, but a lot of times the experience you have or the way the material is approached can make it very difficult for people to succeed and do well in chemistry. And so I'm really trying to figure out a way that I think I can help as many people succeed as possible. Now I have some bronzer apply and I look, I look very glowy and a bit more, have a bit more color to my skin. So if you're super fair, I really do recommend checking out this 100% pure gem luminizer in rose gold. To, it really does work so well. It's just weird how well it works. So a, another reason why I think you guys, um, the, my skin looks so glowy is because of the highlighter I was using. And I went in with the Root uh, White Gold Illuminator. If you haven't tried this out, you definitely need to. It is beautiful. It is super glowy. It's really incredible just how well it works, like it's amazing, especially for something in Green and Eco Beauty. It's also cruelty free and vegan. So just an awesome product to check out. And I like applying it with a root brush and this is their Root Satin Illuminate brush. I really need to try out more root brushes. This one is so soft and I love how it applies the highlighter. So they have a new foundation Kabuki brush. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I'm really interested in trying it out. Not that I don't have a million videos to do, but if you're interested in seeing me try that out, let me know because um, I've seen him doing like a test, a found, like a foundation application test with it. So I'm going to apply this to the tops of my cheekbones, on my cupid's bow, and then a little bit on my brow bone as well. Something happened that I really wasn't expecting, which is I actually won a fellowship in our department. And, um, a fellowship and graduate school is kind of like a scholarship in a way, but it not only pays for the tuition, because even though I'm a student and even though I haven't taken classes and going on four years now, we still have to pay tuition, which is interesting. That's part of the whole conversation about graduate students unionizing. If you've seen that in the news, um, this is kind of the reason why that some of this is coming up, but I, want a fellowship, but not only does it pay my tuition, but it also pays my stipend, so my salary. And what that means for next year though, is that I'm not going to have to TA, which is amazing. I have been TAing on and off since the first year of graduate school. And you really, for our department, only supposed to TA one year. That's the minimum you have to do is one year. But my advisor has just been short on funding because getting funding in science is just dicey. Like, it's a lot of luck. Every time the government switches from being majority one party, being majority another party, they have different interests in science, different thoughts on funding science, they cut funding to different agencies, and it, it's always just this turmoil and mess. So um, I've been TAing for the past four years on and off. This will be my first year not TAing, which I'm super excited about. I was sorry, I was looking around for my Silk Natural Stick'em Eye Primer. I'm going to be applying this on my eyelids. As much as I love teaching, it's just really hard during the year to balance teaching and research because, you know, you want to do both to the best of your abilities. And a lot of students, um, you know, we'll basically put Ting on the back burner and do the minimum that they have to do. Which I understand because you're basically has to do two full jobs at once. It's not a good situation. There's too much pressure put on, too much responsibility on two fronts, and it's really hard to do both well. And the reason you're going to grad school is to complete your thesis. So when you think about it that way, it naturally makes sense to emphasize your research over teaching. But I was, because I'm interested in teaching, I always feel bad for the students and I want to help them and want to do as much as I can. So I end up putting a lot of time into um, TAing, which then makes my research take a back burner. It's really, it's very difficult to balance both. And so I'm really glad to just be able to focus on research this coming year, especially because the summer, I'm not going to be as productive in research as I normally am just because I am teaching. We're jumping back to makeup here for a second. This is the um, Gem Deluminizer again. What I'm going to do is this is going to be a one eyeshadow, well, a two because I need an inner corner highlight, but basically a one eyeshadow eyeshadow look. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and pack the Gem Deluminizer on my lid and then I'm going to take the 
blending Basti brush from MOTD and blend the gem luminizer into my crease. Anyway, I was very surprised to actually receive the fellowship. I, I just wasn't expecting it and it was one of those things where it made it feel like all the difficulties that I've gone through have been worthwhile. Well, not entirely worthwhile, but I felt kind of recognized for all that I've done, which um, I, I don't know. It's not something I feel very often. And that's part of why I'm really grateful that my husband is also a scientist because he understands a lot of the struggles I go through. Not entirely because um, he is a man, a, a um, white man in science, which um, he is definitely in the majority of scientists and being a woman, you're not in the majority, especially in my particular field. I am definitely a minority because I'm in physical chemistry. So I'm in the intersection between physics and chemistry, which, you know, there typically aren't many women in physics either. And so there aren't a lot of women in uh, physical chemistry. So there are a lot of struggles I face from that that he doesn't, he, he, he tries to relate to, but it's really hard um, to relate when you haven't when you haven't been the only woman in a meeting um, talking about science and you know it's harder to get people that are men to listen to your ideas sometimes and you can get talked over and so it's just a different struggle there there are always struggles to science in graduate school but it's a different struggle for a white man than it is for a woman for someone who is hispanic for someone who is black it's it's very different and so it's really it's nice to have him be able to be supportive of me in this you know the science regard but it's i've also become a lot closer to other women in our department and um there's a female professor in our department that i really look up to and she's really offered me a lot of advice and support her about being a woman in science she actually wrote the recommend one of the recommendation letters for me for the job that I got teaching. So she's just been really awesome. But yeah, it's, <laughs> even though we live in the year 2018, science is not diverse enough. Science is not inclusive enough. And there's still lots of really wacky things that happen in academic settings that really probably shouldn't, well, not, probably shouldn't, they just shouldn't be happening. But at least now there is more awareness about it and an openness for people to be able to talk about it. So, I mean, that's really what I want to do is I want to make science a place for everyone. If you want to be a scientist, you should be able to be a scientist regardless of your background. Well, you need the proper training, but like if you come from a high school that's not maybe it's an inner city school, maybe it's not the best school. That shouldn't just predetermine that you can't be a scientist, if that makes sense. I really want to make science a place where if you want to study it, you can. Okay, for inner corner highlight, I'm going to go in with the Root White Gold Illuminator right on the inner corners of my eyes. I'm going to do that with the MOTD Pencil Me In brush. I guess I should talk about Chicago a little bit. It's been a while since my trip to Chicago, but it was amazing. Part of what was so great about it was it had been two years since I'd been there, um, four years since my husband had been there, and it was where we met. Like, it's it's the beginning of our love story. And college was rough, and college can be rough for a lot of people. And it wasn't, you know, all roses and unicorns and rainbows and smiley faces all the time for me. It was definitely tough, but it really, going back with my husband, I, I don't know, I just felt very nostalgic while I was there. We actually were able to go into the classroom where we met, um, which was amazing. Also, one of my best friends is still in the area going to med school, so we got to hang out with her, which was great. She was one of my bridesmaids at my wedding. I don't know if you guys have been to Chicago, but Chicago has an amazing food scene. So basically we just ate our way around the city of Chicago, which, you know, that was great. I'm gonna pause for a second. I am going to apply some eyeliner. I'm typically not an eyeliner person, but 
I regretted when I looked at the video not um, kind of doing some tight lining and doing a little bit of eyeliner on my upper lash line. I just felt like my eyes needed a little bit more definition with this shade of eyeshadow. So I'm going to be using the Alima Pure Eyeliner Pencil in the shade Ink and I'm going to jump off camera to do this because there's no way I could talk and apply eyeliner. Oh, also I'm going to be applying the Well People Expressionist Mascara, so I will just do that as well and I will be right back. That definitely helped to define my eyes a little bit more. Now I'm going to apply some lipstick. The lipstick I applied in my other video was the Cloven Howe Lipstick in Blooming, which is this beautiful fuchsia color. And I do have to say something about this lipstick. I have a similar color um, in Cloven Howe Lip Velvet Formula in Road Trip, that's what it's called. It's a little bit more of a bright pink. It's got less purple to it. But what I have to say about this though is it is surprisingly long wearing. Like I was wearing this, I had lunch with my friends and she was shocked by the end of our meal that I still had the lipstick on. Like it does transfer and fade, but it stays on a lot longer than you expect. So it is definitely low, more low maintenance of a formula than I would have expected for a shade like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. Here it is applied. It actually is a little bit difficult to apply because it is so hot in here because I don't want the air conditioner on and I feel like it is approaching 90 degrees. The lipstick was super creamy because it was a little bit, it's hot and it's a little melty. But um, yeah, you can see how pigmented and beautiful this color is. So I forgot to mention this, but before I go, um, I wanted to finish telling you the tale of our trip to Chicago. We got to go to dinner at the restaurant where we had dinner for the first time which was also really awesome. And we got to see Hamilton, finally. I feel like we were some of the last people on the face of the earth to see Hamilton. I am a huge lover of musicals, always have been, always will be. Hamilton was incredible though. It, I was really nervous about seeing it because it had been hyped up for so long by so many people. And all I'd heard was it was amazing, amazing, amazing for years. And it was amazing. Like I have been listening to the soundtrack so much since we got back. I refused to listen to it before I saw it because I'm one of those people that I want to be able to associate the soundtrack with the memory of seeing the musical. And so I have to see the musical, hear the music for the first time there, and then listen to the soundtrack. And it creates a it creates a better memory for me. I was just blown away. And I really appreciate, as I mentioned a little bit, I'm about the diversity of Hamilton. So as I mentioned, I'm you know, very concerned about the diversity and inclusion in Slumhands and it was so amazing to see such a diverse cast in Hamilton because you're used to seeing musicals of mainly everyone being white and it doesn't affect what you think of a character. It matters that the actor is amazing and could sing incredibly. That is what matters and it was just so beautiful to see that. I don't know if that made any sense, but it was really special and just incredible to be able to see that, especially in a musical that is doing so well. It is sold out all over the country. It is really great to see such success, if that makes sense. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this makeup look, seeing how I got this kind of bronzy, glowy, summery makeup look with a fun pop of color. Also, I hope you enjoyed kind of learning a little bit more about me and kind of hearing what's going on in my life right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also check out my Instagram. I'll have my handle down below. I'm at Naturally Beautiful Girl. And also be sure to hit the notification button so you actually see my videos in your feed. Do that for my channel. Do that for any channel that you love and who's um, any YouTuber whose videos you actually want to see. Be sure to hit that bell. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.